Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Thank you so much Mr. President for that and the speech. At this point in time, I'm going to invite questions from members of the press. Please be advised to be brief so that uh, the president can take in as many questions as possible. Kindly start by introducing yourself and then the media house which you are representing. So, the first three questions, please, from members of the press. Yes, the gentleman. Over. State your names and then the media house that you are representing. Okay, uh, my name is Prava. Um, my question is on uh, the yesterday's statement that was uh, issued by the former president, uh, Mr. Edgar Rungu, on uh, the corruption fight that is taking place, uh, where you question uh, the government in the manner that is, uh, it, uh, that is handling uh, corruption matters. And also, where I was urging the, the president that he, uh, he needed to fire, to have fired the former minister of uh, foreign affairs. But then, compared with the, what he's saying and what was happening in the past, they seem not to try. So, as um, MMD uh, president, we wish we would like to uh, get a comment regarding that. Uh, was, was, there, was there any genuineness in the manner the former president is urging government? To handle the case of uh, Mr. Kautubo, whose issue is anchored, is anchored on a private business transaction with a, a business party. So, then, uh, secondly, uh, there is the issue of uh, MMD, same MMD operation somewhere there. I don't know how you are uh, how you are dealing with them to sort out uh, some of the issues that are that are being raised about MMD as we go into 2024. I One more question, because already the, the two questions have already, already been asked, because the president will be taking in only uh, three questions in a row. Yes, sir. Landing Commissioner, I'm from News Figures. I have two questions. I think I'll be allowed to say. So, the first question is uh, you rightly pointed out that in 2014, uh, the late President Arabi uh, came back and decided a lot of their issues in. Uh, uh, the MMD administration. I've seen uh, the return of uh, former president along the politics and uh, a number of issues with uh, two factions in the same uh, uh, party. And we want to comment on the return to politics. The other one is on the issues arising in Congo. I don't know if you're aware that uh, the opposition in Congo are actually saying that election should be announced. We want to your comment uh, given your experience in these uh, uh, elections. One more question, no? That's enough. And let, um, thank you so much. Let me deal with uh, Mutinta uh, from Daily Mail. Uh, yesterday there was a statement made by President uh, Edgar Lungu about Honorable Kakubo and that President Hakainde should have fired him. I have uh, mentioned before in this statement, that it is important for the Zambians never to forget history. And by the way, when we refer to what PF used to do, we are not saying UPND must be doing what they used to do. But there are certain people that can make certain statements who have the moral right to make a statement. And there are some who don't have a moral right. In this case, my older brother, ECL, does not have a moral right to make this statement. And I must make it very, very clear that at the end of the day, 
what we saw with Honorable Kakubo is what happens in developed, what happens in developed uh, democracies. You know, uh, I don't know whether you've ever heard <clears throat> that uh, President Biden fires the Secretary of Education. Uh, Biden fires the Secretary of State. Uh, yes, Trump, they could have used that. Even Trump used to ask those people to tender in their resignation. There's a reason for that. A democracy and being removed from office should be a personal reflection where the minister or the public officer realizes that his actions or accusations against him cannot make him stay in office. And he went ahead and resigned. And it's a commendable thing to do. And we appeal to all the young people that in future will be found in a similar situation to emulate what happened with Mr. Kakubo. But in the PF government, our, our, our position as MMD and our experience is not a good one. It has been a very problematic one, and for many Zambians as well. And I think on the issues of corruption, maybe we should ask uh, President Lungu not to say too much right now. Uh, because Zambians are still hurting, uh, Zambians are still processing the kind of corruption that was uh, in PF. And the fact that the law has been slow and the process has been slow does not mean that those people are not going to be held accountable. So I think that uh, former President should have congratulated Kakubo for resigning uh, to give way for investigation. You have asked a question on uh, self-MMD. Uh, how are we going to hold them? We don't, first of all, we have to be clear. I made a statement earlier on that everyone has a, a Judas Iscariot. And um, that Judas Iscariot must be allowed to be present because they sharpen where you're going. Uh, we don't understand what they want. Uh, they have lost all the cases in court. I must confess that there were 26 cases, and we won almost all of them. And so there's really nothing we can discuss with them. They are free to come back to the party. We told them, even before the last convention, we challenged them to come to, into the party, come to the convention and contest any position if they were going to be allowed to be in the party. Well, they never came. They chose to be, because uh, they're more relevant outside than they're going to be inside. So I think that, um, we are going to do what uh, Jesus did with uh, Judas, uh, leave him. We are going to do what God has done with the devil, let him do his, the devil do his job. So we are not going to preoccupy ourselves with this. But they are welcome to come and, and readmit themselves in the party if they are going to be part of the program next year. And in any case, um, uh, Save MMD as it's called, it's an illegal organization. And so we are not going to spend time in that. You know, on, Mr. Komesha has asked on Arabi's return to politics, how that affected uh, politics, and now that ECO has come, what is our comment? Let me be very clear. First of all, the return of ECL into politics we will not have any different result as a return of Kenneth Kaunda was and as a return of uh, Arabi was. What is going to happen to PF will not be any different to what happened to UNIP and what happened to uh, MMD. It all centers on former presidents. That is why at the beginning, I made a statement on behalf of my colleagues here, the MMD. We made it very clear and advised PF, and I gave a special message to Mr. Uh, Edgar Lungu. I said, my elder brother, my big brother, do not be tempted to go back into politics. Number one, you will destroy your party. And I can assure you, God is fair. God doesn't hate you, Nick, or doesn't love PF more than he loves MMD, more than he loves PF. Uh, I mean, you need. What they have done is suicidal. And mark my words. I say it now, I said it before, but we are speaking from experience. Former presidents of ruling parties, any time they have pushed in, they have brought a division. If you think 
those eight candidates who wanted to stand in PF have just given up and they will not be doing any agitation anywhere. You are wrong. Those ambitions are alive. They may not talk about them, but they will rise at the same time. And when they do, they want to suffer this PF. And it hurts some of us because although we were offended at what they did, at least PF should have been given a chance to learn from UNIP, to learn from MMD, and do something different. But they have chosen to follow the script. DRC elections. I, I think that the challenge in DRC is the challenge on the African continent. As you are aware, I've been involved in monitoring elections or rather observing elections uh, for the past you know, uh, period of this year, 2023, a lot. And we need a SADIC to make up our minds. Do we want to raise our standard of democratic approach to elections? Or do we want to keep ourselves as what they are? the Western people call just Africans. And I believe that observation groups can do a lot of work in challenging the governments or the electoral commissions when they're doing the wrong thing. Because the problems we have in Africa today are coming as a result of compromised electoral commissions. Yes, there are military coups, but they have slowed down in the past number of years compared to what they used to be before. The biggest military coups now are the electoral commissions that are being manipulated and creating insecurity and also violence in these countries. We need to pray for the RC. We need to pray that you know, the people of DRC be spared. They don't need more complications. They have suffered for years. And we should pray, and mark my words, when it blows up in DRC, Zambia will be a big victim. And so let us pray that that country remains intact. We are very deeply concerned. That would be my answer. Thank you, Mr. President, for those uh, elaborate responses. The President is ready to take in uh, some three more questions. Any questions for the members of the press? Yes, uh, the lady in the blue jacket there. Eh? Kindly state your names of the media house you are representing. Thank you. My name is Lucy Nambeda from Capital FM. Uh, Mr. President, you have rightly noted that a section of society perceives you to be a UPND sympathizer or praise singer. So the, per the perception is that you are too sympathetic to the UPND when most opposition leaders are anti-government. So is, in saying this, are you looking at formalizing an alliance with the UPND? Thank you. Yes, the gentleman I find there. Um, I'm identified as Dr. David from Kumasi Community Media. Uh, morning, President Monga. Good morning. Uh, in your statement, you, you you gave us a brief background of what happened to uh, your party and, and your name. So, on writing on um, uh, the growing democracy, um, freedom of choice, freedom of assembly. They trained to see to it that the ruling party um, in the, in the, in the uh, UPND, um, UNIP, era, UNIP era, the MMD uh, slightly did whatever they could to prevent KK from standing. And then a similar situation is seemingly be happening now. Riding on freedom of expression and the growing democracy, how best can governments, possibly maybe the government that will come in the future may do the similar things. How best can governments in championing the growing democracy tend to deal with the former regimes? One more question. Yes, sir. Um, my name is Mangaira. I write for Roger Pope. Mr. President, in your speech, you indicated that the, the fight against corruption is progressing well, though at the low, at the low pace, and uh, that tend to make sometimes people feel the people that are targeted for having looted to some extent the state corpus look more victims than they are. My question to you is: Are you 
how would you see the fight against corruption? So are you satisfied with the way, the way things are going on? Okay, the president may respond to those circumstances. Uh, Lucy from Capital FM, thank you so much for your question. Uh, let me be clear. I already mentioned that um, October, 20, October 2021, the National Executive Committee of MMD uh, agreed on a partnership with our colleagues in the European Union uh, to work together in certain programs. Uh, you must understand that MMD and UPND have a history together. Uh, in 2016, uh, we worked together in an alliance uh, in that election. And um, when the party was taken away from us by the PF, uh, we were working, continued to work with the UPND. Uh, when President Hagarid H. Lema was imprisoned on treason, uh, my colleagues, you know, uh, the late Mlongoti, uh, President of Infrastructure, Lupi, and myself, played a role in encouraging the UPND to continue in their efforts in the absence of their president. So we have a history of what are the values we want to see in government. Uh, president Hagen and myself have shared several values, and we felt that because we share a history and values, it was easy for us. Just because your colleague becomes president doesn't mean that now you're fighting because you're in opposition and he's, he's become president. I think that when it goes wrong, you hear my voice uh, about these issues. Uh, there's no perfect leader on earth, no perfect leader, and nobody does it right all the time. And that's why partnerships are important. We are living in a generation, Lucy, when partnerships are the way to go. Alliances, allies. That's why even the powerful United States of America has allies. They have the UK, they have Germany, they have European Union, they, they have Israel. Everyone needs alliances. And we do, we choose the alliance ourselves we want. It can either be with another political party in the opposition or the party in government, depending on the relationship we have. And I think that the relationship we chose with our colleagues is based on principle. We agree on the rule of law, on order, and ensuring the economy gets healed. MMD found a broken economy. And we brought it back to a place where we became one of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world. We think that we can help in what is happening in the UPND. They, they seem to have the same vision of resuscitating the economy. And I think that our partnership, hopefully, it can continue to be uh, an encouragement to them. So when are we finalizing the alliance? I think once everything is finished, uh, you know, uh, within the next few weeks or so, uh, we will probably be stating our final position in how we are going to work with our colleagues in the European Union. At the moment, it is important for us to know that MMD continues to operate as a political party and will continue to operate as a political party even after we forge any uh, partnership. Just like in the opposition, uh, there will be many partnerships that are going to be forged ahead of 2026, uh, but those political parties will continue to be political parties. Uh, was that a darker that asked? Which yes, one? sir. David, uh, you were asking David. about how best government should deal with former regimes. I, I think that history should teach us on how to face the future. Personally, I do not agree with the manner in which you know, uh, incumbent governments deal with former, including how MMD dealt with UNIP. I think it was very unfortunate that we targeted UNIP in order to completely finish it. But I do not think what finishes you know, our former ruling parties are the ruling parties. It is the inside conflicts, the problems that begin in the political party, and then the ruling party takes advantage of those conflicts. So if there was no conflict between, for instance, uh, Mr. Ma Honorable Mao Sampa and uh, uh, Mr. Honorable Lubinda, there would have been nowhere for anybody else to, to be seen to interfere in that process. So I think that uh, ruling part, former ruling parties must also have a system of integrity where former presidents are given something else to do so that they don't constantly come back 
to destroy the very parties that helped them to become presidents. I think former presidents need a talk uh, that they can allow the newer generation and trust the newer generation that even without them, they still can see that a political organization can be run. There's no way everyone would think that if ECO is not in PF, then there'll be no PF, there'll be no democracy, there'll be no progress. No, no, no. One comes, goes, God will always raise somebody else. Uh, that is our position on that. And then, of course, we have uh, Mwangaila, the fight against corruption. I did say this, we are not satisfied. We think that even the five months is too long. We know what is going on. The corrupt people are really feeling like they've got this thing under control. And if we don't win this fight against corruption, the monies of the Zambian people and the resources of the Zambian people will continue to slip through the fingers. Because the gentlemen and ladies who are in government today, they are watching to say, oh, there's no serious punishment for those that stole. Now we are sitting here, so let me also get money because our friends got money and they've got away with it. They have built mansions, they own seven vehicles each, they're flying all over the world, they have buried money in their farms, they have got dollars everywhere. Let me also steal. We need to fight this. We need to see some people be held accountable. If we don't, the stealing from national coffers we will never end. And I think UPND has an opportunity to break this thing and ensure that you know uh, this fight against corruption is done consciously. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. President, for the quality of the responses. I think uh, the president can take in uh, three more questions. Are there any more questions? Okay. Uh, if there are no more questions, there's one. There's one. Okay. Uh, president Joshua here from One Love Radio. And uh, One Love Radio is a Christian radio station. So my question will be directed to that. Uh, seeing as you are one of the leaders that uh, in this country that has been very clear on the declaration of Zambia as a Christian nation, and I think the one of those that have really spoken out regarding this. But from your own point of view, with the current happenings in the country, where there are some changes in uh, how the public perceives uh, Christianity and the laws in the country, do you think uh, the declaration of Zambia as a Christian nation going forward is under threat, seeing as there are a lot of uh, issues being talked about, especially in the church, also the inclusion of LGBTQ rights in our constitution. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I, I don't think we have any legislation that supports LGBTQ in our constitution. We don't have that. Uh, we do have a piece of legislation that prohibits it and the exercise of it. Um, on the Declaration of Zambia as a Christian Nation, as I've already noted, we are deeply concerned. I think from where I stand as a minister of the gospel, I, I think there is very little genuineness in a lot of us. We use Christianity when it suits us. We caught it on our Facebook uh, walls. Early in the morning, we post pictures of people praying. It has become a religion. It's no longer a personal relationship where we depend on the values of our, of our faith. We are calling this country to a place of exercising our faith in our everyday lives. When you hate your neighbor, you need to reconsider as to whether that is basically part of who we are as a Zambian people and as a Christian nation. So we think that we can do better, and that is why we have made these proposals in today's statement, that can work as pillars around which we build the declaration. Right now, the declaration of Zambia as a Christian nation has no pillars. You know, it's just something we talk about. It's not respected, and I think that on the day that it is being fully celebrated, 
we try to have a day of prayer and fasting and, and reconciliation, and it seems to be losing its steam as well. Um, we need to reorganize ourselves. We need to make sure that it becomes part of our identity and we draw who we are out of our belief system of our faith. So we are deeply concerned as MMD, being the party that declares them as a Christian nation. We think that we are falling short in ensuring that we lead by the standards of, of the Word of God. And I think that we can do it. We have made proposals, and this will be a good place to start moving forward. <coughs> Thank you so much, Mr. President. Well, at this point, there are no more questions to be asked. Uh, we have come to the end of uh, this media briefing. And uh, I'd love to ask our beloved party president, Dr. Neva Sekula Mumba, to pray for us uh, as we disperse. Now I'm going to ask Pastor Chilua to close for us in prayer. Shall we offer prayer? <laughs> Father, we thank you for this all oh God interface both the Zambian people and the press. Lord, as we dismiss one from the other, we pray for your grace and fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Oh God, to abide and go before us. This we ask in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. And the media house, houses that were invited, please kindly see me in that corner there on the left. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. May we give a chance for the president to exit. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.